that. I'm sick. Hello everybody, E here. Uh, back again with another movie review. Um, I guess Monday's for movies now. Since I can't seem to get these up on the weekend, I was going to try to do like Cine Sunday, but no, uh, I'm not going to do anything on the weekend anymore. There's going to be a blog post up about this later on, probably today. Yeah, it's Monday, so later on today. I'm actually filming this the same day I'm uploading it because I have been wrecked this weekend. Um, there's been community drama, there's been uh, everybody in the house is either sick. We thought it was allergies, but now we're thinking that it's, you know, everybody's just sick. So uh, I've had no time to do anything. But today we are talking about a ghost story. Landon will be cheering at this point uh, because uh, he sent me, he was kind enough to send me this, uh, I think back during uh, my birthday, uh, or was it Christmas? I really, I can't remember, dude. Um, it was probably Christmas, I don't think it was that far back because my birthday's in August. Me and Shell watched this and for the first half of the movie, I was utterly bored out of my mind. Um, I had wanted to turn it off. I was like, of course, this is, I mean, it's, this is Landon's favorite movie. Me and Landon have polar opposite ideas of what's good and what's bad. Um, for him, he likes a bunch, he, he likes mostly weird and off the wall stuff. And I like weird and off the wall stuff as long as there's a point to it. Like in Dreamcatcher, there's no point to the weird and off the wall shit. Um, in this one, I was worried that that's where it was going. Um, but then halfway through the movie, there's this scene at a dining room table during a party and it is it really struck me uh, on a on a deep level uh, several ways because anyone who has read my work um, my, my writing um, for those of you who don't know I'm a writer um, for those of you that have read the Bay's End series it's almost the same exact thought process that went into my entire series as what is shared during this scene with the uh, with the main in fact the entire theme of the ent the, the whole movie it revolves around the idea um, that nothing ever really ends as long as someone remembers it um, and that's kind of the the glue that holds my universe together period uh, and the same thing is mentioned in here I don't want to go into too much detail because of spoilers but after that I was far more invested into the movie. Now, are most people going to like this? I have no idea. I have no idea what kind of reception this movie got. Um, I don't know if it's well reviewed. I, I have no idea. It is a beautifully shot, uh, very emotional story, but almost nothing happens throughout the whole thing. You are basically watching people re react to grief, um, or you are watching people just living their normal lives. There's no um, action, there's no plot really. Um, this is this is the epitome of an art house film because it all centers around the overarching theme. And then you get to the end and you're like, okay, well that, I mean, there's there's not even like a surprise at the end. You know, you pretty much know what's going to happen once the final scene pops up um, because you know how the movie began, that kind of thing. But, not how the movie began, but a certain scene toward the beginning. Um, the one thing that I will say is I think Casey Affleck was completely wasted here. Uh, he does a great job being mundane. I mean, he does a great job. It, it, literally anybody could have played this part because most of it is just shots of him, you know, just either listening to music that, you know, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but listening to music or lying in bed, that kind of thing. Um, there is one bed scene that Rooney Mara and him do really, really well. Um, it is a, it's not a sex scene, but it's both of them in bed and their reaction to each other. It looked like a loving couple together that maybe have some issues, but they're trying to work through it. Um, that's probably the best part of the entire movie for me um, because of the, the, that one scene, and it's repeated again later on in the film, um, but that one scene is a terrific showcase of not, like I said, it's not sex, but it's two people being loving together 
even when they're maybe not the happiest with each other, um, coming back together after a fight, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Rooney Mara did an absolutely amazing job. There's a scene that stretches on forever. <laughs> um, for at, And for at a moment, this is the point there, I al one of the times I almost turned it off until I realized what the director was going for. There's a scene with her eating pie. And it seemingly goes on forever, and I, just, I kept on waiting for something to happen. Um, if you go into this movie expecting a horror movie, you are going to be sorely disappointed. It is from the uh, studio A24, which is known for their horror movies, but they also do drama. And some of the best horror stories are dramas. But, this is not a horror movie. This is a love story. This is a story about grief. This is a story about relationship. This is a story about the universe, the nature of the universe. Um, it's a very deep, uh, deep experience. And I think if I had known that before I went in, then I might have loved it more than I did. I liked it, um, but I'm not in love with it. So, but I don't hate it, Landon. So I guess that's a plus, right? Um, anyways, have you watched a ghost story? What did you think? Let me know down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another movie review. Movie review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. I almost didn't do this review. No joke. I almost. I was, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take this week and get to feeling better. But every single time I do, and this is, this, I guess it's kind of beside the point. I mean, it's not really a matter of uh, you know monetization. That I don't need it to live, but it is nice to have the extra money. The, uh, anytime I go longer than two days, my, uh, the amount of money I make on the video seems to drop for some reason. I don't know what the algorithm is or how it works. So, uh, yeah, I'm out here, uh, I'm out here because of money. And that seems funny. It seems, seems weird considering I started this channel, um, as fun. Um, and it's still fun. I mean, if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. But, uh. I, I feel an obligation to to the community, and because I am making money off of this now, so I I hope that makes sense. Anyways, uh, spoilers here. You're in the spoiler section, so spoilers. Um, yeah, uh, this the the whole nature of the universe. How no how as long as somebody remembers you, you're an immortal kind of deal. And the circular nature of the, of the story, the way it all comes back and you see the ghost in the room with the ghost and you, you see that it is, it's just a, a constant loop. I did something like this in The Bedding of Boys, which is really fucking freaky because I, I literally, I have a story about a, a, a ghost in a sheet uh, called The Bedding of Boys. The title of the book is twofold. It literally means, you know, sex with boys. Uh, it's about a female pedophile. Sex with boys and literally this boy in this sheet, right? Um, or ghost boy, whatever you want to call it. You have to read the book to find out more. But, um, so it was really freaky to find my thoughts on the universe, or my fictional thoughts on my universe, um, on, on screen and there being a monologue from this guy um, who literally sounded like me talking about my you know m my fictional universe it was, it was really it was really odd and it took it took me back a bit but uh <coughs> yeah the that i think that struck a chord with me and if it hadn't have been for that scene i probably would have pretty much you know and and the, the scene where they're laying in bed kissing um and just kind of holding on to each other like they're the last thing that they have on uh, on earth but they you know it's not been perfect so um but they they still have each other to cling to they, that was very very moving for me the scene in the bed other than that i could have done without just about everything else in the movie <coughs> sorry uh it was a bunch of shots of people doing absolutely nothing um the scene with rooney mara and the am i saying that name right yeah rooney mara sitting in the kitchen eating pie. I mean, what is, how long is that scene? <coughs> Sorry. How long is that scene? Like five minutes? I don't, I don't know. It's just her sitting on the, in front of the sink, on the floor, eating pie. And it was boring as hell for like the first two or three minutes. I'm like, all right, come on, get, get done. I understand you're trying to be artsy fartsy and whatnot. And then all of a sudden I was very, very sad. 
And I think that's what the the director was shooting for, of course. I mean, it, it had to have been. Not like he wanted you to laugh at her. But uh, you got the ghost in the background, and you got Rooney Mara sitting on the ground, and she's the tears are falling off her, into the pie that she's eating. And she just demolishes the pie. It's like the more angry and grief-stricken she becomes, the more she attacks the pie. And I, I finally caught the theme of it. <coughs> but other than that, it's basically just a movie with, you know, still shots of people doing nothing. Um, or people just being normal, like the uh, Hispanic family, they're all sitting around the table or whatnot. It's just people doing everyday stuff, um, and this ghost watching them. I mean, you have the, the dico not dichotomy, but you have the dual duality, I think that's right, of the ghost and the camera, or the camera being the ghost, the ghost being the camera, just sitting there and having to watch. And it's putting you in the place of the ghost, so it is thrusting you into that character's thoughts when that character has no dialogue, no no narrative, nothing like that. So, yeah, I liked it, but uh, there was some there was some issues with just being bored, um, honestly. And you can appreciate something pretty, but after a while, you know, I don't want to stare at a beautiful painting for two hours. That's not me. If that's you, fine. It's not me. But Landon, thank you for sending this. I appreciate you, man. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.